everyone, it's Kimberly Study Abroad Specialist. In today's video, we are doing another installment of the Study Abroad Scholarship Spotlight. We're talking about the Rhodes Scholarship. So before we get started, I just want to let you know about an exciting freebie. If you have not had a chance to download my Finding Your Perfect Study Abroad e-guide, this is going to be a great time to do it, and it's a great video to feature it on because we are talking about getting started with your study abroad journey, and we know that for a lot of students out there, that journey begins with thinking about scholarships and money for study abroad. So with this particular e-guide, we cover the common types of study abroad programs around the world. We talk about some of the pros and cons of each, and then we start thinking more about based on your personality, based on what your interests and your goals are, how you can go about deciding on what type of program is gonna be good for you. So definitely give that a look. It is free and it is printable as well. So I hope that you enjoy that. So we are diving in to talk about the Rhodes Scholarship. So similarly, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the Fulbright Scholarship and with that one, that is a well-known one. The Rhodes one is also well-known. I know that a lot of students around the world, they hear about that all the time. There are so many different famous politicians and people of influence that have done and become Rhodes Scholars, and it definitely is still very prestigious. And so we're going to talk about what that means and potentially how you can get one. So with the Rhodes Scholarship, it's important to know a couple of things about it. So there are a hundred in total that are given out every year, and it's not necessarily given out by calendar year. So when I say year, I mean for the academic year that they're given out and the process takes a little bit longer. It's not quite as long as Fulbright in terms of what they're sort of evaluating, but it does take a little bit, but there are a hundred every year, 32 of them come from the US. So if you are an American student watching this, we already have a competitive advantage. And that's why so many of our politicians and well-known people from the US have gotten Rhodes scholarships. And you don't see that as much from a lot of other people in other countries, but there are 32 that come from the US. So for other countries, there are different ways that they are parsed out. But it is important to know that it is a full ride scholarship. So that is one of the appeals of it because you get a full ride, everything covered. We're gonna talk a bit more about what specifically is covered, but full ride and it is to study at the University of Oxford in England, which is about an hour away from London. I've been to Oxford a few times and it is a wonderful place. Definitely very kind of, I would say magical and that feeling of villagey, but also you can just feel the history when you're walking around there. It is a great place to be. And I know that for a lot of students, particularly if you're coming from the US, but other places as well, you've probably heard so many great things about Oxford. And there are a lot of great research pieces and other things that come out of Oxford. So it's really, really exciting to have the chance to be able to do this. Now, one of the things that the Rhodes Scholarship focuses on is not just academic excellence, because that is not going to be just enough. You can be a great academic person. You could still be a failure later on in life. I don't mean to say it blunt like that, but that's so true. There is something that is different between sort of having the book smarts and sort of having the overall common sense. And so with a particular scholarship, what they're looking for is not just your academic excellence. That is just an expectation, but also as well, what are your future leadership skills? So particularly for students who are interested in doing leadership or, and that leadership can mean anything. It doesn't just have to be that you're in politics. You could be a CEO or you could be someone who wants to start your own company. You could even be someone who is running just a, another company of somebody else's. That does not matter, but have you shown and demonstrated leadership skills? Because again, as part of this scholarship program and with the intensive things that you're gonna be doing at Oxford, you need to be able to, number one, be able to stand independently so that you can defend your own ideas and that you can uh, be very strong on your own research, but also to sort of thinking about how you can inspire others. That's a huge part of this scholarship. And I think that that's one of the things that sets it apart from a lot of other scholarships where they may just be solely looking at academics and they may look a little bit at your leadership or you know what you do outside of what you're doing with your studies, but it's not as heavily weighted, whereas with the Rhodes Scholarship, it definitely is. And so that's why they're super selective in the way that they choose people and why 
it matters that you can demonstrate that you are not just smart with your book smart, so you also have a lot of common sense and that you are in the potential um, arena to be able to lead people, whether it be now or in the future. So on your screen now, I am just gonna put a list of some well-known people, particularly well-known here in the US. I mean, I think everyone on earth knows who Bill Clinton is, but, <laughs> um, and this is not a political statement. I'm not talking anything political here. I'm just saying that in terms of who you can see here on the screen, these are some of the people that you may or may not know who have high uh, name recognition that have been Rhodes Scholars in the past. These are just some from the US. There are many others around the world. As I said before, there are 32 people every year that come from the US and then the rest come from other parts of the world. So if you're watching this from a different country, you probably know some people within your home country that have name recognition that have done the Rhodes Scholarship. But I just wanted to point that out just as a little bit of inspiration. I know a lot of people like to know what has someone who has gone much more farther than I have, what have they been able to do? So I definitely wanted to be able to just show you that for a little bit of inspiration, if that is something that's going to inspire you. So when it comes to eligibility, I know that this is something that a lot of people want to know, am I even eligible for this? So one of the great things is that within the past, I believe it's five years or so, they have opened up the opportunities to be able to apply to everyone pretty much around the globe. So in the past, it was specified for specific countries. So the US, Canada, uh, Europe, all the kind of main ones you would think, but they now open it up. So they have a global track as well. And so this is a great opportunity for people coming from other places around the world. If you are from the Middle East or you're from um, parts of Africa, but you have the chance to also apply as well and be considered. Now, I did just want to cover the age situation because that was a little bit different than what I was expecting. I personally do not know anyone who has been a Rhodes Scholar, but I have been in contact with some people who do similar things to what I do. They were telling me more about the aging sort of that situation. And I also did some research on it. So I want to share that with you now. So in thinking about the age, you wanna be very clear about this because you have to be at least, and I just wanna point out right now, sorry to break any hearts, but if you are past the age of 30, you are not gonna be eligible to be a Rhodes Scholar. So I'm so sorry if that was your lifelong dream and now it's opened up to you or even you gone back to school, it's not gonna be possible. Again, they're trying to get people when they're a little bit younger. There are scholarships out there where you can do them anytime you'd be eligible anytime. And we will eventually cover those on the channel, but specifically with the Rhodes Scholarship, it happens when you're a lot younger. And that's something to kind of note that, again, with the people that I just showed on the screen, they were younger when they got it. So obviously Bill Clinton was not president when he got the Rhodes Scholarship. That was long in his early days, or even Pete Buttigieg or whoever, they were a lot younger in their study. So that's important to think about that it is tailored towards younger people. So to sort of read through some of the eligibility for you, you have to be 18 years old, but have not reached your 24th birthday. So you could be anywhere between 18 and 24 <laughs> by the time that your particular program starts and you get your scholarship conferred, or you could have completed undergrad, but not reached your 27th birthday. So that's a little bit of a tricky situation too. So you can either be between 18 and 24 or you have, so the way that I like to think about it is that you sort of have two chances. So there's two windows. So there's a lot of people out there. And I think that part of the reason why they do this is because they know that a lot of students will want to sort of come out of school and then get some work experience and then go back. So you can either be, I'll repeat it again. You can either be 18 plus, but have not reached your 24th birthday by the time that your scholarship starts, or you can be completed your undergrad, but not have yet reached your 27th birthday. So that means that you have two different windows. You either have the window that says, I am between 18 and 24. So that is usually between early high school graduation and your college years ending, and then you coming out getting a job, or maybe you did do that. So you went through high school, you went ahead and graduated high school, hopefully secondary school. And then if you were doing road scholarship, you probably did that. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you would go through college, you came out, 
you did some work and then you still have a little bit of a window. So as long as you are basically between 18 and 27, there's a chance. <laughs> so you should be really lucky about that. And I know that most of my viewers here are young, you're either in high school or you're in college. And so you are still right in the right demographic. If you are a little bit older, I'm so sorry. It's not gonna work for you, but there are other scholarships out there that you can learn about. So I wanted to talk through that because I know that it's really interesting with a lot of the scholarships that I've been going through and that I will talk about on the channel. They don't necessarily talk about age. They may talk about level. So let's say you have to have finished your bachelor's degree or finish your master's degree, but they don't put an age limit on that. So there could be a lot of older students, returning students that, you know, or maybe when I say older, I don't mean like grandma's age. I mean, like even people my age that are in their thirties who have gone back to school or done whatever, and then they want to pursue a scholarship. For some of them, they're like that, but for the road specifically, they are targeting a younger demographic. So definitely just be aware of that. And you still have a chance to compete whether you have even taken a different route. So maybe you were someone who you took a gap year, but yet you still are not 24. There's still a chance. Or like I said, the most common sort of situation that you might find yourself in is maybe you got out of college and then you want to work for a few years and you're like, you know what? I really want to apply for this. There's still an opportunity to do that. And it is a wonderful opportunity. So definitely look into that if you are between those age groups and you feel like this is a good opportunity for you to pursue. So for some of the benefits, I'm just gonna put them up on the screen. I would imagine that in your head, you had some of these ideas. But as I talked about earlier in the video, one of the main benefits, and I think that this is something that makes Americans really excited that there are 32 chances to potentially get it, is that there's full tuition. This is something that usually doesn't even happen here in our country. So the fact that you get to not only study abroad, but have full tuition taken care of, including the application fee, that is huge. So that is something that is of total benefit if you are able to show off those leadership skills and that academic prowess. So full tuition is covered, including the app fee um, to get into Oxford. Also as well, you get a living stipend and you get an opportunity to be able to support yourself while you're there because most likely whatever um, visa you're gonna be on, it's probably gonna be um, the level four visa in the UK. You're not gonna be able to work long-term. We have talked about different ways that you can get around that if you wanna do some part-time work, obviously legally, but you are not gonna be able to support yourself fully. So this is gonna be a great opportunity to have the ability to have some place to, as we like to say, softly fall and not necessarily worry about your income or any type of money while you're there. Other benefits include settling in fee. So that's another huge one. That is something that most colleges and universities here in the US definitely do not offer. And as someone who has gone to other colleges and universities around the world, I can tell you, we do not get that either. So your own settling in is your problem. And so you get a settling in fee, sort of a way to be able to find your footing once you get on campus at Oxford. That's another great benefit of the Rhodes Scholarship. You also too are going to get the airfare to actually get there. Um, or if you are coming from someplace else and you can just actually take a train or whatever that's gonna look like for you, you're able to get the transportation. I'll just say that it's not just airfare, but my mind just goes to airfare, just thinking about that. Most people actually fly in um, to whatever country they're going to, but however you're gonna get there, you're able to get that covered as well. And then last but not least, you're going to have the full coverage of your visa. So the fee for your visa will be covered through the Rhodes Scholarship and then also your health care. So in terms of when the applications open, so this is really important because it's a shorter window than you would think, but then it takes a little bit longer for them to go through everything. So I kind of like the way that they do this because they're not having it open for seasons and different reasons, as we like to say. So the application opens every start of every July. So it opens in the beginning of the early July period. And that is a period of time where, you know, a lot of people are traveling, they're doing whatever. So if you are someone who wants to apply for it and you're interested in doing that, just remember that you're gonna have to get on that. They do review every application. So don't feel pressured in that way that, oh my God, I didn't get it in 
the first of July, I'm doomed. That's not true. They have to go through and review every application. So they're not necessarily reaching out to people ahead of time that way, like a lot of organizations would do. They will review your application, but you want to make sure that you actually don't miss the boat and you actually get it in and start looking at whatever you're going to need because the qualifications could change. What they're expecting could also change as well. Things change all the time. And then in terms of when they close it, they close it in October of every year. So that's an other thing to kind of think about is that you sort of have this window of knowing, okay, like during this time when you have already applied, let's say you apply in mid-July and you know that it closes in October, that you can be looking for other things just in case. I always like to recommend to people, don't obviously put all your eggs in one basket. Don't just choose one scholarship. You need to choose other things, but at least you kind of get a time frame and this is all listed on the website as well. So you can kind of look and see what the expectations are by year. Um, but it's great to kind of know. I think that that is one of the most frustrating things for all of us, whether we are applying to something, whether it's a job or scholarship or school or whatever, is when you don't know anything, you don't get the information. People are not saying, oh, you'll hear back from us during this time. It can just rack your brain. I've been there where it's like, when am I going to hear back? And of course, you don't want to be to overly aggressive and reaching out like, why haven't I heard anything? But you at least want to know. And so I like how they lay out specifically about telling you this is a time frame when we accept applications. This is when we review applications. This is when we will let you know, just so you have an overall idea. I think that that is just really helpful so that you can put a plan into place to begin applying for other things, looking around, but also to kind of staying focused on getting the Rhodes Scholarship that you really, really want. So that was just something that I wanted to point out just so you have an idea of when you should be applying and when you should get started. So I hope this video, as with all my other videos, was helpful for you. The Rhodes Scholarship sounds like a great opportunity, particularly if you are within that window where you can still get it. So definitely check that out. I'm going to link all the information that you're going to need below to get started and look at that. And please subscribe to this channel. I will be releasing more videos. I release videos every single Friday and on Wednesdays and Thursdays as well, and definitely have more scholarship videos coming up. So go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell button as well so that you can be notified when new videos are released. Please like this video and definitely please share this video with someone else that you know that would like to study abroad. I will see you in the next one.